How's it going everybody? Corbin here from Zoco Marketing. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about five ways to optimize your Google Shopping ads. This is for anybody running Google Shopping campaigns and looking to take them to the next level. I'm gonna be diving into actual accounts and showing you different things that you can do to improve your Google Shopping ads. These are um, tips that I've been able to use and really scale stores, make them very profitable. So I'm excited to be sharing some of these top five tips with you. Uh, before we do jump in, please, if you are new to the channel and this is your first time here, don't forget to subscribe. It does help me to continue to create free videos just like these. Um, and uh, I really just appreciate the support. So let's actually now just jump right into the first tip and jump into the platform. First tip that I have for you is to optimize your price. I think a lot of people overlook this, um, the importance of price when you're looking at the listings, because oftentimes you will show up directly right next to um, competitors that are essentially uh, uh, showing the same product as you. And what I mean by that is if we look here, so I have a two person tent. Now you notice a couple of things with this listing is one right here from the beginning, there are two with the selling the exact same tent. And this is good, right? This person has um, a price of uh, $199.95. This one has a price of $195.95. Now um, this is a good uh, a good example of these two showing the, essentially the same price. But imagine if one was $10 less and they were showing the same price right next to each other. Which one do you think would end up winning? right? Um, that's the power of what, what we're kind of talking about by optimizing your price. And if you look here in this situation, you'll notice it kind of cuts off this tent right here, but this tent right here that's, that's selling for $53 and 98 cents. And this one that's selling for $71 and 97 cents are the exact same tents. So if I'm inside of here, I imagine this person is not getting a ton of buys. If people are seeing this one first for essentially, um, you know, $10 cheaper or whatever the math on that is, is $12 or whatever it may be. But um, this is so important. This may be one of the biggest factors in optimizing your Google shopping ads is optimizing your price. And optimizing your price does not always mean lowering your price. Sometimes the perceived value of having a higher price actually increases your return on ad spend. Um, I've seen it go both ways. So that's why it's very important for you to be testing your price, maybe adjust, uh, increase it 10% during one time or decrease it by 10% and see what that does to your return on ad spend. Now, if you if you want kind of a benchmark on where your products are um, uh, compared to the competition as far as price goes, Google actually is rolling out a new beta feature that allows you to kind of get this information. So if you come over here to a Google Ads account, and sorry, a lot of stuff is blurred out here just for protecting this account, but you'll notice that I'm here in the product group section underneath a shopping campaign. Once you're inside of there, what you can do is you can come over to these columns right here. You can modify columns. You want to come to competitive metrics. And you notice I have a lot, all of these clicked, but the ones that you specifically want to pull in is the benchmark product price difference, different, difference and the um, probably benchmark click-through rate as well. So we have those pulled in and then now we're gonna come over here and you notice this uh, uh, benchmark product price difference will show you, okay, this product right here, I'm currently uh, at an average of three and a half percent higher of a price than the competition. This one, I'm 50% higher than the competition. So um, you can kind of go through and this again gives you an idea here, we're less than three, or we're 3% less than the competition, our, our typical price. So this gives you an idea of kind of where you align up. You know, if, if we're at a 50% price increase, chances are the, the um, return on ad spend on this product isn't gonna be as good, or it's actually really good because it's perceived as a high value, high ticket item. So that's why I say, make sure that you're testing both higher prices and lower prices, but don't underestimate the power of the prices. And now while we're inside of this account, another thing that I do want to point out and another important tip, tip number two, is you need to be pausing products inside of your shopping campaigns that have low return on ad spend. Now my typical rule for pausing products is either if they have over 100 clicks or they've spent more than the, um, the purchase value of that product. And so typically what I'll do is I'll come back and sit in the same column, product groups, and you can break out your product groups, by the way, by clicking this little plus button if you wanted to. It might be blurred out, but there's a little plus button. And uh, if you scroll over, the column that you're looking for is conversion value over cost. And as you're looking at this conversion value over cost, you notice here um, in this new account, we have a, a product that's getting a 3.7 return on ad spend, but then other products here that are lower in the um, rate for this specific campaign. So we're gonna wanna go through, once these have like um, 100 clicks or so, we'll scroll over just slightly. You'll notice that some of these are already, you know, a thousand clicks to a hundred. This, so this would be an a, a example of a product that I would go through and probably pause because we've gotten over a hundred clicks and our return on ad spend is at a zero right now. So I would just go through, hit this little plus button and pause that, you know, as we go through other campaigns, you'll notice that we have higher um, conversion value over cost. You know, this one's at 154. So um, really good averages there, but go through and find the ones that have a low conversion value over cost 
you know, for a lot of e-commerce stores, you usually need to be at like a 2.5 conversion value over cost to really be making a profit. So that's what I, I recommend doing um, inside of there. So that's tip number two is to pause products that are not getting a return on ad spend, which I know sounds self-explanatory, but a lot of people overlook that and they don't maybe know how to do that. Um, so don't forget to go through and do that. And now it's time for tip number three, which is you got to understand how bidding strategies affect your impression share and essentially how bidding strategies work. Um, and what I mean by that is if we look over here, you'll notice that on, on these couple products, so this one has a 33% conversion value over cost. This data is still fairly young, so not a ton of clicks to go off of there, but the search impression share isn't even showing up as you can see. But on these ones, we have, for instance, a 20 um, realize, a 20 realize, and then an eight realize. And as you can see, we're only capturing 21% of the impression share. Now, what this tells me is that our conversion, our return on ad spend is actually very, very high. We're capturing a low portion of the search impression share for this specific um, category. What that tells me is that my target ROAS is probably too high. When you have a higher target ROAS, say that you're aiming for 500, 600, 1000 percent, whatever it may be, then you're going to get less impressions and Google is going to try and optimize for a very narrow audience. So if you're if you're realizing that your products really aren't getting shown a ton, you need to lower your target ROAS slightly. I don't recommend, you know, lowering it by a lot, but maybe by, you know, 10, 20% so that you can start getting this at more of a balanced number now. And what I mean by that is if, if for instance, this stays at a 20, that's great if you want to do that. But if you really want to scale, you're going to have to lower your target ROAS slightly so that you can capture more of this impression share. And here's how you essentially you do this. This campaign is actually on a manual bidding strategy um, for now for this shopping campaign. But essentially you could come over here to the settings and if you click on bidding, you can come over to change bidding strategy. And here's where you can change that bidding strategy. If you're on a target realize, you can come through and optimize this. So the lower this number is, the more impressions you're going to get, but probably the less profitable you'll be. But if you come through and, and up this number, say if I upped it to 540 or whatever it may be, then I'm probably going to have a higher um, return on ad spend, but probably less impressions because my competitors are bidding essentially lower. The higher this number is, essentially the lower the bid you're going to give Google. So keep that in mind when you're adjusting your target ROAS. Another just little tip to, to, to realize when you are changing your bidding strategy is typically I see it takes about seven days to two weeks for the algorithm to relearn that bidding strategy and really get it into a good spot. So whenever you're adjusting your target ROAS, make sure you give it at least two weeks to um, give it a fair, fair run on um, optimizing for those things. Now I'm going to come through and hit cancel here because I'm not looking to uh, change this bidding strategy. Right now I have it on a manual bidding strategy. Um, if you're wondering is because when I'm first launching new campaigns, sometimes I like to launch it on a, a manual bidding strategy so that Google can kind of learn and get the conversion data before you start optimizing for smart, um, smart bidding with uh, target ROAS and things like that. And now we're going to move on to the fourth tip, which the fourth tip is actually in Google Merchant Center. And I think this one is kind of a self-explanatory tip as well, but make sure that you are always paying attention to Google shop or to Google Merchant Center to see when errors pop up. As you can see here, errors can pop up on your shopping ads, your dynamic remarketing, um, your buy on listing Google, uh, buy on Google listings and your free listings. So if you come in here, if you don't know how to see when you have, um, when you have essentially product errors, all you need to do is click on this diagnostics tab and it will tell you exactly what is going on, what the problem is. As you see here, I'm having problems with this buy on Google listing right now that I need to go through and fix. It kind of spikes in random ones. But the more, the less errors that you have in Google shopping, the higher your quality score on the account will be. And obviously uh, you don't want products that are disapproved and not showing up. So you want to be checking this all the time to make sure that there's no disapproved products because say that maybe one of your, your your top two products or whatever is all of a sudden disapproved and you don't realize for a week and that's going to be me be a world of pain that you're going to have from not getting those sales for a week or whatever it may be so um, make sure that you're coming in here to optimization you can click on this diagnostics tab and scroll down it will tell you exactly what the problem is you can come in here click in here and view examples of what is going wrong so this is a great uh, resource to actually go through and troubleshoot and fix those um, uh, problems in your merchant center. I will be creating a full tutorial on how to fix Google Merchant Center um, uh, errors and how to fix your product errors. So if you are interested in that, don't forget to subscribe to this channel because I will be creating a full tutorial that goes through all that, but I don't wanna dive too deep into this right now for this specific video, just because of length of time and everything. And now on to the fifth and final um, tip that I have, which I think is very self-explanatory as well, but make sure that you are optimizing your images and your headlines. So be sure to come through and test different headlines that people are, uh, test different headlines for your shopping ads, test different images if possible. 
Um, obviously, I think this one is is a, a, a no brainer, but one that I did want to make sure that we include in this one. So be sure to go through and test those different uh, headlines inside of Google Shopping Ads and inside of your different platforms. And that is everything that I have for you in today's video. If you did find this one helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.